All right, hi again, Attorney Steve Vondra, and we're back. We're talking in this video about my top 10 tips for law school greatness, not just success, but greatness. So I'm gonna share some of my top tips, okay, that I learned and things that you should know if you're going to law school, this is your first semester, pull out your notepad, these are some things you're gonna to wanna to know. I'm dedicating this video to my nephew, Brandon, who just got into University of Pennsylvania, Ivy League, baby, and we are so proud of him. And so I just wanna share some tips, and so this video is dedicated to him. We wish you the best of luck in your next journey. It's gonna be amazing. You're gonna absolutely love it. You're gonna just, you know, you're gonna call me and say, Attorney Steve, I, I'm just so excited, I don't know what to say. This is an amazing, amazing process. So without further ado, let's get to our top 10 tips. Okay, my first tip is very simple. You want to, this is something nobody probably has taught you, but at the end of your law school course, you take a bar review course. But why not take those tapes and listen to them before your class? So I used to do this, okay, and it took me about a, um, a year to figure this out. I was actually in law, law school in the li law library one day, and um, I, was, I forget what it was, I think maybe it was a contracts issue and I was kind of struggling with it, and it was like a third year law student that said, you know, like, bro, why don't you just listen to the tapes? And I said, tapes, what are you talking about? And he said, there's law school tapes, you know, that, you know, it's the bar review tapes. And so you learn what you need to learn and you don't waste your time on everything else. And I said, wow, that's a neat concept. So I went to the lo local law bookstore. Um, I believe it was in Anaheim. I don't know if they're still there. Anaheim, California, and I went and bought the bar review tapes for all the classes. You know, there's about 14, 15, 16 classes that are bar tested. So I went and bought all the videos, uh, not the videos, the audio tapes. And so what I did is then I started listening before, let's say the class was going to start in January. In December, I would listen to all the tapes, and it really wasn't that much. It was about eight hours of tape. And I would take notes and I'd make a timeline and I had everything figured out what the absolute important essential issues were before I went into class. And that just took me leaps and bounds above others. I amjured my contracts class. I amjured my torts class. I got the top grade, which they call, what do they call that? The jurisprudence award in entertainment law. So things became so much easy, but people didn't know my secret. I was listening to the tapes, making outlines. Then when I went into, into the class, I knew what was important, and I knew what was just a law professor kind of rambling around and, you know, you know, talking about this, that, or the other, and, you know, but so I knew the nuts and bolts. So that's my tip number one. If you do just this and you stop your tape right here, you'll find that you'll do very, very well with this approach because this is what they're testing for. At the end of, at the end of your law school career, they're just seeing if you know these things, so you might as well take them before the class starts. So, and you know, I found that it made the classes much more interesting. So, of course, a law professor is not going to tell you this. Only Attorney Steve is going to tell you this. You've probably never heard this. You heard it here. Number two, um, I put on my list, read all the cases yourself. Read all the cases. What some people like to do is, you know, get into study groups, and you read these, and you read these. Um, I, I didn't like study groups. I like to do my own work. I like to read all the cases, outline them, case brief them, do my own work. Now, that's not to say that I never got, you know, you get your th into your third year. For me, I went four years at night. That's not to say my third or fourth year I, was, I wasn't going a little, oh, yeah, I pretty much got this stuff figured out now. It's not to say that it wasn't getting there, but the point of the matter is, I think when you get into law, you're going to be doing this every day. So why not just get in the habit of reading all your own cases, okay? So that's number two on my list. Three, I put think about study groups. Now, um, I tried them. Everybody said, oh, you got to get in a study group. You got you, you to gotta get the right person. You got to, it's like a basketball game. You got to pick the right players, the smartest ones. And that may be good. That may be work for, that may work for some people. You know, as they say, you need to figure out how you learn, okay? You, you may learn best in groups. For me, it didn't work. It was a total distraction, too much talking. Um, I really didn't want to hear all these other different, you know, 
opinions that we're, we're turning into a debate. Let's just brief the cases, get those outlines done. That's what you're looking to do and understand the case law, okay? So study groups, think about it. You don't have to do it just because it seems like everyone else is doing it, okay? That's number three. Number four, make your own outlines. I have that down here and I'm gonna talk about what I called my condensing procedure, okay? So this is really important. So do your own outlines. If you're gonna be reading your cases, putting in the work, make your own outlines. You, again, sometimes these study groups will go, well, you do contracts, I'll do torts, he, he, you do constitutional law. I mean, it's, I think you're doing yourself a serious disjustice if you're, you're doing that injustice um, because you're not, condensing the material into your mind, you're not digesting the material as you need to do. Because when it comes time to do the bar exam, you don't get to call your buddy and ask him, what did you have in constitutional law? I kind of forget. You, so to me, this is just, again, this is my opinion. It, you know, it works differently for everybody. But I think that you should do your own outlines, do your own work. And what I used to do and how I prepared for the bar exam, in fact, I prepared for one of my bar exams right over here. I took both the California and Arizona bar exams and passed them both, but one of my examples is right here. But my condensing procedure was to write the outlines, and then as I proceeded closer and closer to the bar review, I would condense my outlines because I already knew certain things, and so I didn't have to keep rewriting them. But the, I kept condensing my outlines three or four times until I got down to a little book with about five pages and I just go, I could go through that five pages really quick, and I could go, yeah, I got it. I know what's in there. I know what's in these five pages for torts. I know what's in these five pages for contracts. I know what's in these five pages. And then when I got right up to the end, I did it all in about the whole thing in about three or four or five pages. So I literally walked into the bar exam with like a three or four or five page book. Everyone else that I saw, at the bar exam, everybody's walking in with these big notebooks, you know, sticky tapes everywhere. Everything's highlighted in, in 10 different colors. And I just go, that's madness. Like to walk into a bar exam on, on that day and be expected to, I mean, if you haven't condensed it all in your mind and figured it out by then, you know, it's just a, it's a big, big, big exam. So I condensed, 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 and I would write them. I would just write it out condense, condense, write it, and then as I was condensing, I would crumple up my papers, and in fact, right over here, I had this huge mound of papers, and uh, that's the way I did it, but when I walked into that bar exam, I was confident, I was relaxed, I had just a little five-page, you know, people thought, I probably thought I was crazy, they're probably like, where's all your books? You don't have, like, like piles and piles of notes, and uh, but no, and, and I saw people studying in between uh, different sections of the bar exam. I'm like, that's just madness. You know what I did? I sat in a chair and I relaxed in between, in between when we had breaks. Uh, at the end of the day, I relaxed. I didn't go home and ha I didn't have to go back to the hotel room and cram. So that's my advice. Number four, condense, make your own outlines, condense, condense, condense. Trust me, muscle memory, muscle memory. By the time you go into the bar exam, you'll have all that stuff in there. Number five, I put don't obsess about exams. Um, this is, a, again, another one of these things that I saw all, I'm not saying all, many, many, many other students do obsess, you know, go crazy, you know, talk about exams after. Did you, sp did you see that? Did you spot that? Did you see that issue? Oh, I talked about this. I talked about that. It's kind of maddening. So just do everything, prepare to the fullest, put the hay in the barn, as they say, and then when you go there, just do your best. And that's what it's, that's, that's what it's gonna take. Um, as I say, give it your best shot, and don't forget, now I'm gonna tell you RTDQ. This is for the bar exam, okay? And also your exams that you're gonna have in, in each of your courses in law school. I had a prof I had, it wasn't a professor, I had a, uh, one of my classes, uh, I think it was evidence. Um, a guy walked in and he was the exam proctor. And he walked in, nice guy, he walked in and he wrote on the board in super large letters, R, T, D, Q. And he said, you know, he gave us the rules and instructions for the exam. And then he said, last tip, R, T, D, Q. Read the damn question. And so what he was trying to say is, 
read the call of the question, okay? In, in your exams, in, in law school and in the bar exam, you're gonna get a big long fact pattern, blah, 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 everything happened under the sun, but you need to see what, what the question is. Discuss the rights, you know, what are Paul's remedies? It may say, what are Susie's remedies? Read the call of the question, because what you can actually do is make a mistake, start writing about something they're not even asking you about. So RTDQ, read the damn question. I'm passing that on to you. That was helpful for me. Um, and again, I wrote, the, I wrote this down. Um, although this tape is for my nephew, Brandon, you know, somebody may say, shh, you know, why are you, sh why are you sharing all the secrets? You know, just tell me. Um, here's my deal, okay? This is what I believe. I believe in life you are competing against yourself. Yes, you are competing against other people. Yes, you, you know, when I was a baseball player, I wanted to lead the league in hitting. Yes, I was competing against other people. But ultimately, at the end of the day, in law school, after law school, in your job, in your career, you're always competing against yourself. Number one, you're competing against yourself to see what you're capable of, to see what your potential is, and to see just how great you can be. And so to me, sharing tips with everybody, it's not the biggest deal in the world because you got the tips and with your talent, you can take it to the top. Nobody's gonna get in your way. So always remember, you're always competing against yourself to see just can you get every last inch, every last piece of inspiration out of yourself, okay? All right. And again, it's about reaching your full potential in all things going forward. Number six, okay, so you just got my top five. Number six, on the exams, it's issue spotting, okay? It's issue spotting, baby. And the way that you're gonna get that figured out, the way you spot issues is you know the law. You know the law cold, as they say, know it cold. Okay, and so when you have all this information in your head, and you've got it condensed and you're just, you're just breathing law. You're just ready to, to put it out there for, for, for the, just to you know, show the examiners what you know. Um, that's going to help you spot the issues. And the most important thing is to stay organized, spot every possible issue. I would take extra time. Most of my time was to make sure I wasn't missing any issues. I did not want to miss an issue. You know why? Because when you get into the real world of law practice, if you miss an issue, like, oh my gosh, you had a negligence claim against a doctor. Why didn't you pursue that? That's how you would have actually got your recovery. You know, if you're not, if you're not issue spotting, if you're missing these key issues, you know, they're thinking, you know, that's what he's going to do in practice. That's what she's going to do when she's out there um, in the big law firm. She's going to miss an issue. And, and that's what you're trying not to do. And I'm not saying you're going to be perfect, but do everything you can Take your time, read the facts. Why do they use certain words? Why do they use certain settings? Is it a red herring or is it a real issue? So take your time reading that fact pattern. I know you're gonna be stressed, you're gonna be under the gun, but you've gotta take your time and make sure you get that, those issues down and organize it. I would always organize my issues and if there was a key buzzwords I wanted to make, I knew what the law was, so I knew what I was gonna say on the law. I knew how I was gonna analyze things. I knew what my conclusion would be. That would be quick and easy. But, <clears throat> the, um, but spotting the issue, if there was a buzzword, like I wanna make sure I say res ipsa loquitur. I wanna make sure I say that because that's bonus points. I wanna get that in there. Um, you know, I would write those little special words down. But before I ever put the typewriter to, to finger to the, to the uh, keyboard, I knew what I was gonna write. And, and, and I can't stress that enough. You don't wanna do it the other way around, which is kind of ad hoc, you know, you know, swing from the hip kind of thing. That's gonna get you into trouble. You're gonna miss issues. It's issue spotting, baby, number six. Um, seven, here's another, okay. So here's another one that I have. This is just for law school, okay? So you get in there, there's a lot of people in there. And for, for me, a lot of them were smarter than I was for sure, you know, um, bigger, better schools, everything. And um, so, but when you get into law school, it can be intimidating for some people. And in some classes, I would say, uh, for me, probably half the classes that I was in, the professor would want you to stand and recite the case. 
Um, a good example of this, by the way, is um, Paper Chase. I think I believe they did that in Paper Chase. If you haven't seen the movie, watch the movie. But you know, it makes some people kind of crazy. But to me, that was the fun. You get to stand up and do the case. Now, usually, the classes I remember is the the law professors would be looking for volunteers. And if somebody, and it was a little more, um, what do you say, uh, less threatening environment when you're asking for volunteers. But my point is, pick the cases that you enjoyed reading. So say they give you a, an assignment in constitutional law and you read six cases that day. One of them you really liked. You go, wow, this is really interesting to me. Here's what I would do. Instead of worrying about whether or not I was going to get called on, I would like to volunteer. In other words, I would pick the case that I really liked. I'd sit more towards the front of the class, and I would, I would raise my hand and go, go you know, do you mind if I do this case? Um, and believe me, you know, most people aren't racing to raise their hands. So, but you get to do that. You get to do the case that you like, and you're going to be under the gun anyway at some point, and you're going to have to practice and do this in your profession. So why not do that? So my advice on this, tip number seven, stand tall. Don't be afraid to volunteer. And remember this saying. I always say this because, you know, um, you get into a class with, you know, you're going to University of Pennsylvania. It's like crazy, Ivy League. You're going to have brilliant, brilliant people in there. And it's, it's a tendency to, you, people have a tendency to say, I'm being judged, I'm being watched. Yeah, you are. Guess what? Everybody's judging you. Everybody's watching you. That's just the way it is. Not a big deal. But stand tall and realize the critic counts for nothing. This is one of my favorite sayings. The critic counts for nothing. It's the man or the woman in the arena fighting the battle, doing their best. That's all that matters. The critic, let people think what they're going to think. Get out there, do it your best, give it your best shot, and don't worry about what anyone else is thinking, okay? It's your field. It's your courtroom. Take charge, baby. All right, that's number seven. And as I say, sometimes if you if you're feeling a little nervous, just tell yourself, I got this. I got this. You know, when I used to play baseball, I used to, you know, um, with the Cincinnati Reds organization, sometimes my first at bat, I'd be a little bit nervous. You know, new pitcher, new setting, lots of, lots of fans in the stands. I tell myself, you got this. You've done this a million times. The hay's in the barn. You've done your practice. Let's go out there. Let's tune it everything else out and let's focus. And that's what you need to do. Um, number eight on my list. Take time for physical exercise and stress relief. So it's, I have this tendency today, you get so busy, you work so hard, it's so competitive. You got this bar exam looming over your head. You don't want to fail that, you know. So you, you're going to have a job, a big job waiting so you, but you need to take time for yourself. Go out and walk, um, exercise. You know, go to the bowling alley, have some fun, get together with some of your other classmates. You know, get into the softball team or whatever. You got to do things to take some of the stress off, and you got to have a little bit of fun along the way. Okay, so that's number eight. The, uh, hand in hand with that goes good diet. You already know all this stuff. Most people do, but again, that's all integral. That's all part of it. Weightlifting, hiking, whatever it is. Get some physical exercise. Number nine, um, this is what I call stay relentless. Keep your foot on the pedal, okay? So it's a long haul. I mean, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't come and go overnight. You know, you're getting a doctorate degree. Think about this. For most people that are listening to this video and going to law school, you're going to be the first person in your family, number one, that's going to have that Juris doctorate degree, okay? That's a doctorate degree. For me, that, you know, I'm the only one in my family, and that's a big deal. You know, I wear that as a badge of pride, something you work for. But you got to stay relentless, stay focused, eliminate the distractions in your life. You know, you've got you've to fine-tune and hone yourself into this. Keep your foot on the pedal. You'll find once you just keep that foot on the pedal at some point, whew, you're just going to be going. You're going to be a race car, race car. So, um as I mentioned, when you get tired, take a break, but mentally get back up and get going. Okay, so that's number nine. Number 10 is, and before I get to number 10, um, if you haven't seen my video on how to read a case, I have some special tips 
on how to read a case. And it's very important if you're going to law school. Again, people aren't going to tell you this up front. Law professors love them, but they're not going to tell you these little, little tips. Make sure you Google Attorney Steve how to read a case. <coughs> okay, number 10, have fun. This is all supposed to be about having fun, building for your future, making things happen, thinking like a lawyer, learn how to think like a lawyer, learn how to think on your feet and talk on your feet as they say. So you're supposed to enjoy this process. And again, you're becoming a scholar, you know. So where you were in college, now you're going, you're essentially going to the intellectual big leagues, baby. So you wanna, you wanna have fun, you wanna enjoy it, make a lot of friends, your contacts, the people that you meet, you know, not all of them, but some of them are gonna be good friends and you're gonna take it on into the future. And you know, wherever, you know, there's so many places that a law degree can take you. You know, again, I think I, my general advice is always become a lawyer or, but you have, you have uh, possibilities in politics becoming a judge, anything. There's like so many different things, CEO of a company, a lot of different things. But again, dream big, have fun, make friends, work your butt off, and follow some of these tips. And, and these, aren't, these aren't an exclusive list. Ask other people, they may have some other tips. Learn how you learn, you may have some other tips. But that's it, baby, those 10 things are my 10 things that I would share. I don't have any kids, but if I did, I'd be sharing them with my kids. But those are my tips, top 10 tips for success, Attorney Steve, and with those, Brandon, we wish you well, Aunt Lisa and Uncle Steve, we wish you the absolute best, and we know, we know that you're going to be amazing, amazing. Congratulations on getting into the Ivy League, and even if you're not in the Ivy League, you can still do very, very well in this profession. And like I said, for me, it's made all the difference in the world. And the people that helped get me here where I'm at, you know, I'm truly thankful. So again, I hope this video, if it helps one, five, ten people, I'm happy and blessed. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, too bad. And uh, if you like our channel, make sure you subscribe and we're really looking forward to bringing you more videos. So that's it. I got to run. Take care. We'll see you at the bar. Attorney Steve.